It is a cool, cloudy day over the dense forest that will one day be Canada, a land dominated by agile carnivores and massive herbivores. But one does not have to be massive in order to be successful. Trundling through the low-lying ferns and cycads is a male Anodontosaurus. He is an ankylosaur, a 4.5 meter herbivore that makes up for his short stature by being covered head to toe in thick osteoderm armor, making him almost impervious to attack. But it's not just defense he excels at. On the end of his tail, he has a massive bone club that when swung can shatter limbs and pulverize flesh. Though Mayo and Odontosaurus mostly use these mace-like weapons against each other for either territory or females during the breeding season, but both sexes have the clubs, and when in a pinch, are incredibly effective against predators or any unfortunate animal that frightens them. Because the payoff of having such a heavily armored skull is that there isn't a whole lot of room left for brains, and most of said brains are dedicated to the animal senses, so their response to most things getting too close to them is often to swing first and not ask questions later. Anodontosaurus, like many ankylosaurs, have very wide guts. This is because many of the plants they eat have very little nutrients, so they have evolved a long digestive tract so the plants stay in the intestines for as long as possible to soak up every bit of energy. Even with this wide gut, and the thick armor that surrounds it, ankylosaurs still have to eat a lot, and being so low to the ground, they have no choice but to graze and graze and graze. The male will likely spend the majority of his day feeding and resting in the shade of the tall trees that surround him, only occasionally checking his surroundings for threats, as there are very few creatures that could harm him, and even fewer that would try. Alarm calls ring out from the male's right, making him turn his head in the sound's direction. Soon after, a chorus of piercing bird-like shrieks get closer and closer, and then a flock of Ornithomimus comes sprinting through the foliage, so on an intercept course with the Anodontosaurus. The male knows they are no threat to him, but raises his tail up as the noise of the Ornithomimus puts him on edge. The light agile dinosaurs either bolt past the ankylosaur or sidestep around him with ease. The flock passes, but what comes after them is something that makes the Anodontosaurus's calm demeanor switch off immediately. Chasing after the Ornithomimus is a trio of juvenile Gorgosaurus, about five meters long. Nowhere near fully grown, but more than capable of pulling down the thin bird-like dinosaurs. Unfortunately, their hunt failed, but each of them saw a potential new victim. Three sets of eyes lock onto the Anodontosaurus, and together the young siblings stalk towards the armored tank, who is well aware of their presence. Either they have never interacted with an ankylosaur of this size before, or they are far too confident. As even with their superior numbers, they are outmatched in this fight. The Anodontosaurus warns them of a deep rumble from his throat, but the Gorgosaurus continue to circle him, and so the herbivore strikes first. He swings his tail in a wide arc at the predator on his left. The youngster reels backwards, avoiding the deadly club. The Anodontosaurus's tail was not flexible, as almost half of its length was made up of ossified tendons, making it sturdy, but far less maneuverable. The Gorgosaurus on his right lunges forward to bite down on his back, and shatters a third of her teeth in the process. The Anodontosaurus shoves his attacker off, causing it to roll onto the ground. The third Gorgosaurus attacked from behind, grabbing the herbivore's tail just below the club, breaking a few teeth in the process, but he grips tight and pulls backwards. You might as well have been trying to pull a boulder, as the Anodontosaurus doesn't even flinch. Looking over his shoulder, the two-ton ankylosaur makes eye contact with the young tyrannosaur, and then swings his tail hard. The Gorgosaurus was still holding on, and so gets lifted off his feet and launched across the field, his back impacting the trunk of a tree. The first Gorgosaurus was already on top of the Anodontosaurus, trying to bite its rump, 
and force her to the ground, but his target swiveled, and as he did, the thick tail swept the Gorgosaurus's leg and he collapsed into the dirt, but still kicking and biting non-stop. The other two Gorgosaurus hissed and lunged at the Anodontosaurus, trying to get its attention away from their brother. It worked, and the Anodontosaurus swung again, but all the carnivores avoided the deadly weapon. The four dinosaurs stood there for a few seconds, unsure whether to attack, but only the Anodontosaurus was still confident of victory. Then a few sharp clicks came from deeper in the forest. The Gorgosaurus's heads turned to the sound source. It was their mother, calling them back to safety. In that moment, the Anodontosaurus took his advantage, and one final time, swung his tail, aiming it right at the nearest Gorgosaurus's head. When the club hit home, the impact completely caved in the carnival's skull. A loud, wet smack echoed out, as the young Gorgosaurus's head was almost taken off by the momentum of the strike. He was killed instantly. As the corpse splayed out amongst the ferns, the remaining two juveniles cried out briefly before turning and running, seeking the safety of their parents. The Anodontosaurus bellowed after them as another reminder, never to fight an animal you don't have a hope of defeating. The living tank began to walk slowly away. There were too many predators here. He would rather be in an area where he wouldn't be bothered in the first place. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the Warhammer Ankylosaur, Anodontosaurus. The first remains of Anodontosaurus were discovered in 1928 from the Horseshoe Canyon Formation in Canada. It was a partial skeleton that was barely crushed, which actually led to the genus name, as Anodontosaurus means toothless lizard, because the specimen had no teeth and the crushing made it look like the animal instead had an odd pallet-like structure. More remains would be found and attributed to this species, including a more complete juvenile that was originally found in 1912, though mostly known from the previously mentioned Horseshoe Canyon Formation. Additional remains have been found in the Dinosaur Park Formation as well. There are two species, Lambii, named in 1929, and Inceptus, named much later, in 2018. Anodontosaurus was an ankylosaur in the Ankylosaurinae subfamily, and lived during the late Cretaceous from the Campanian all the way to the Maastrichtian, a time span between 75 and 67 million years ago. However, its history as its own species is a little muddled. In 1971, Walter Combs looked at all the ankylosaur remains known to have lived during the Campanian, and concluded that they were all the same species, taking four species and synonymized them with Eulophocephalus. This was accepted until a redescription was published in 2009, putting forth that many of the species absorbed into Eulophocephalus were valid as their own genuses, citing many unique physical traits. Three additional studies would be done, validating Anodontosaurus as being separate from Eulophocephalus, and it continues to be valid to this day. Anodontosaurus is seen as a medium-sized ankylosaur, being between 4 and 5 meters in length, standing between 1 and 1.5 meters tall, and weighing around 2 tons. It is a typical ankylosaur build, being quadrupedal, low to the ground, having a very wide body that was covered in hard armor, known as osteoderms, a short, wide skull with a beak, and a long tail that had a large club on the end of it. Looking at the two different species' skulls, we can see even the face was protected by tough plates, including large, almost horn-like structures behind the orbits. Like other members of its family, Anodontosaurus had a wide beak for grazing on the various tough plants it ate. It did have back teeth, but it likely didn't spend a lot of time chewing like hadrosaurs, and mostly let the gut do the majority of the food breakdown. Running down the neck, covering the back, and even running down the tail were lines of scoots that took various forms from curved spikes to flat nodes. The tail is quite long, with the end being made up of hardened ossified tendons, so that it could hold up the massive club on the tail tip. 
This club, also made up of osteoderms, was thick, very wide, and had blunt pointed tips at each side, making it similar to a double-headed hammer. This broad instrument would have been devastating to any predators that were bold enough or desperate enough to challenge an Anodontosaurus. But predator defense may actually have been a useful secondary trait. It's currently believed that Ankylosaurs originally evolved their impressive body armor to engage each other for intraspecific combat, such as males fighting over mates. This may have taken the form of shoving matches or males trying to flip each other over, as only the later species evolved their famous tail clubs. The development of the club may have meant that they used it as a visual display, holding it up into the air or swinging it around to show how healthy and strong they were to intimidate rivals and attract females. But if push came to shove, physical matches may have followed, but this time with males bludgeoning each other with their clubs, making these fights far more dangerous. The tail itself wasn't very flexible, as the previously mentioned ossified tendons made it very rigid, also called the tail handle. It was very strong and wouldn't have been dragged along the ground. But this also means the majority of the movements would have been generated closer to the hips, and it certainly wasn't twirling it around like a lizard's tail. The Ankylosaur family as a whole has some of the most impressive natural armaments of any megafauna group in all of Earth's history. I said in a previous episode, I believe Gastonia has the best defenses, but I consider Anodontosaurus to have the best weapon. The sheer size and the double-headed nature of the club, to me seems best suited to causing the most damage to any target of the entire family. And its long reach means it had far more range than shorter-tailed species like Stegorus. But what do you think of Anodontosaurus, the Warhammer Ankylosaur? And for my question of the week, do you think a different Ankylosaur species had a better tail weapon? If so, which one, and why? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.